Impact Food Prep Guide, we are going to be canning some beans today. We're going to be doing a large batch of beans. This is how I typically do my beans. I'll wait till I'm kind of low on all of the different type of beans that we stock and then I will spend one day canning all of the beans that I'll need for several months to come. Lord willing, we will end up with 24 pints of beans today three different types. So I want to show you how to can dried beans, but I also want to share my process, my workflow um, for being able to can a large amount without having to dedicate like all of my time and attention to it throughout the day. Especially if you have a smaller canner like I do um, and we're having to do a lot, a lot of batches, how can we kind of get all that done, get in there, get out, and without having to dedicate a whole day to it. So the process actually starts the night before with soaking our beans. So we have, uh, we have some black beans and some pinto beans and let's see what are these northern beans northern beans uh, so the process starts the night before with soaking and i will typically measure out about half a cup per pint so my canner load i'm going to be using all regular mouth pints so that i can get that extra pint in there because um, only seven fit with wide mouth pints uh, but i will do measure out half a cup per jar, so that's four cups total for eight pints. And I'll measure those out into multiple bowls, pour water over them, and then just set them on my counter to soak overnight. A lot of people will put them in the fridge. If you have room in your fridge, you can absolutely do that. I don't have room in my fridge because typically I'm using multiple bowls, doing a large batch, and I find that setting them out on my counter is just fine. So the also then what I do the night before is go ahead and fill up my dishwasher with 24 pints 24 pint jars and get those washed. Have those washed overnight so that in the morning when it comes time to can, I can just grab those clean jars out of the dishwasher and pop them straight into my canner to get warmed up. Um, so at this stage, we need to go through and filter out any beans that have floated to the top overnight because that's a sign that they are bad. Now before I, last night, when I put the beans in here, I did a rinse and I just went through and looked for rocks. When you're buying beans in large bulk, especially, it's common to have little pebbles in there every now and then. And you will also find some beans that are just not high quality and you want to get those out too. It's not the end of the world if you miss one here and there. Um, but here's just an example of a pinto bean that has started. It's just not, it's just past its prime. It's not great. It has started to turn gray. Whoop, there it goes. And here is a, let's see, this is a pinto bean too, and it has split in the middle and the sides have some black spots on them. So those are just two examples of beans that I have, I went ahead and pulled out yesterday. Um, I actually didn't have any pebbles in any of these beans, um, so that's, that's interesting. But now, overnight, they have been soaking, and so I'm going to be looking through for any debris or any beans that have floated to the top. Now in this one, I don't see any debris. I see one bean that has floated to the top. And I'm just gonna scoop that right out. And it's actually not even a full bean, it's just like a shell of a bean. Um, so I'm gonna go through each of these bowls and scoop out anything that has floated to the top overnight, which indicates that it is not good. Okay. We just had just a handful, just a handful of beans floated to the top. So at this point, we need to drain the water off of these beans and get them boiling. So to start, I'm only going to be doing one batch of beans at a time. So let me just go ahead and drain out this water real quick. And once you drain that water, you want to go ahead and give it a good rinse with cold water again get off all of that water and that's just going to help this the soaking overnight process just helps um, start break down those enzymes and stuff that are in those beans that can cause digestive issues and getting it out of the water that has soaked in overnight and really rinsing it well helps with that process so now i'm just going to cover this with water It doesn't need to be a certain amount of water. You're just gonna submerge them in water by about two inches or so. And then we are just going to bring this pot of beans to a boil and let them boil for 30 minutes. And then we'll move on to the canning process. So we'll be back after this pot has boiled for 30 minutes. 
I have been keeping an eye on my timer and we are about 10 minutes away from being ready to get into the canner. So at this point, I will go ahead and prepare my canner. To prepare my canner, this is a, a digital electric canner, the Presto, and I'm just going to select pressure can. And in this canner, you go ahead and set your processing time at the very beginning. So to can beans, for pints, you're going to need to process for 75 minutes. At cor For quarts, they need to process for 90 minutes. Of course, you will need to adjust for your elevation. Um, you might need to add some minutes if you are in that elevation range. Look up, you can look up a chart online. You can type in um, elevation for canning or something like that, and it will tell you if you need to add some more time to that. So I'm doing pints today. I'm going to be pressure canning at 75, min 75 minutes. I'm just going to push this knob until it says 75. Click OK, and then it tells me to insert my jars. First, I need to get my canner water going. For this canner, we need three quarts of water to be in the bottom of the canner. I'm going to make sure I have my canning rack, and I do, very important. So I've already measured out three quarts of water into this bucket, so I'm just going to go ahead and pour it in real quick. And then since I live on a well, I'm going to go ahead and add a splash of vinegar to my canner water. If you have hard water or live on a well, you, this is what you can do to keep your jars nice and clear and not cloudy and have that film on them. I don't measure, just a splash. Now I'm just going to turn around to my dishwasher and get eight of those pint jars that we already washed overnight while we were sleeping. And I'm going to fill it halfway with water. Just like that, fill the glass halfway with water and then place them in my can canner. I'm going to go ahead and load up all my jars. And once my canner is full, I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on. What did I do with it? Lock it in place, put my lever down, and then click the next button. And now it says warm. So this is going to go ahead and warm up my jars for me. It will beep several times to let me know when they're done warming. And it will probably be about the same time that my pot is done boiling. Um, that's hopefully what it'll do. It usually takes about 10 minutes. So before, after these have been boiling for about 20 minutes is when I go ahead and start prepping the canner so that everything is ready at about the same time. My timer just went off for the beans and my pressure canner is done on its warming cycle. So I went ahead and turned my heat off and now I need to take my jars out of the canner and we're going to dump that water out. The purpose of that water is just to hold the jars down so they are not floating all over the place and having the water inside the jar probably helps conduct the heat a little better too. So they're usually pretty hot when they come out. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my jar lifter for these. I'm just going to empty out all the water.
Next, I'm just going to drain these beans and I'm gonna rinse it in cold water one last time. Get all of that cooking water off of the beans. Okay, so now at this point, you have a lot of options for how you want to flavor your beans. When I am doing beans, I'm making a very large amount in one day, and I don't know at this point what I'm gonna be using them for. So I'll just go ahead and stick with salt, but you have a lot of options here as long as you are using dried herbs. Um, sometimes I will do garlic and onion every now and then because that typically goes well with pretty much anything that I'm making. But for now, I'm just gonna be doing salt. Remember to use canning salt and remember that canning salt is just, oh yeah, half a teaspoon per pint. If you are gonna be canning in quarts, you can use one teaspoon per quart. But just remember that canning salt is just salt that is not iodized and doesn't have any additives or anti-caking agents in it. This is just sea salt, just plain straight sea salt. I buy it in a big bulk bag and just refill this jar as needed. Okay, half a teaspoon of salt per pint. Now it is time to fill our jars and we need to fill our jars to a one inch head space. Don't wanna get that strainer all the way on that eye over there. jar is cooled off enough for me to touch it. So here is one inch headspace. It's right where the neck of the jar starts narrowing into that bottom ring right there. That's one inch headspace. Now I'm going to fill all of these jars to one inch headspace. too much in that one. It looks like I only ended up with six pints. That's weird. I may have mismeasured. I may have mismeasured last night. Oh well. So <clears throat> next is we need water. Now this happens to me all the time. We need to top it off with boiling water. I forgot. I forget very often. So I will just put my water on from my sink as hot as possible and I'm just going to fill the jars with water to one inch headspace. But just so you know the exact proper tested way to do it is with boiling water. I've used just hot water plenty of times. So I'm just gonna fill. Okay, 
So I just filled the jar to one inch headspace with water. You can see that. And then I'm going to debubble it, which I'm just running this through, working out any bubbles. Okay, I've got my damp rag here or paper towel just with some water, and I'm going to wipe the rims and put a clean, warm lid and ring the fingertip tight which just means I'm going to go to the point of resistance and stop there and then place it in the canner. And I'm just going to keep on doing that. Okay, all done. So lid on. Oops. Put this lever down. And then on this canner, all we do is click the next button. And you'll see a sign that says heat. And it's going to be coming up to heat. Now at this point, I don't have my gauge on. I don't have my weight on here. Um, but the, when this thing starts beeping at me, letting me know that it has come up to the right temperature, then I'm going to be placing on this weighted gauge up here and then it will start going into the building up pressure stage and then it will automatically go into processing time all i have to do is come up put this thing on click the next button and i don't have to touch the canner anymore until it's done the next step in my workflow of just working through multiple batches of beans is to keep an eye on the timing of the current run of beans in the pressure canner. So right now we're at 26 minutes. So remember we need to boil the beans for 30 minutes before they go into the canner. So I will just somewhere around the 30 minute mark on the timer, I will go ahead and start the next batch of beans. Bear in mind that even though this says 26 minutes, it doesn't mean that the canner is going to be completely done in 26 minutes because it still has a cool down time for where, where that pressure is having to come down slowly um, and you know, release that pressure slowly. So this is actually going to be more like probably 45 minutes or so. Um, but that's just kind of how I can keep myself on track throughout the day. So I've got my navy beans here, whoops, my northern beans here, and I've already rinsed them out really good. So now it's just a matter of covering with some water again.
I just have those beans submerged underwater by about two inches or so and I'm gonna put it on high heat and bring that to a boil set a timer let it boil for 30 minutes and hopefully around the same time this canner will be done I'll be able to take those jars out put a new batch in and just rinse and repeat forever how many types of beans that I need to do okay pinto beans are done they are looking good now on to, I'm gonna set these in a place where they cannot be disturbed for 12 to 24 hours and let them cool down and get going with the next batch of beans. After the jars have sat for 12 to 24 hours, I will go ahead and check the seals, which I've already done on most of these except for these three. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the rings. Check the seals, make sure that little button is popped down. Make sure we have a high pitch sound and then I'm just gonna take it by the lid and try to pull up on it just to make sure and it's good to go. So now I'm just going to label. For my beans, I usually don't label what type of bean they are because we only usually use and stock three types of beans and they're pretty obvious to tell. So I mostly just date them. And really, I could get by with not dating them because these are going to be used within the next three to four months. But I don't want to get out of the habit of dating because dating is very important. And that is it, y'all. Easy peasy canning dried beans. We'll see you next time. Bye.